And I'll just say for me, I haven't done anything and I pretty much lost interest in doing any of the robot stuff. So maybe, maybe when things calm down, I'll get back to doing something. Oh, come on. Don't lose interest. You're such, you're so good at it. Um, I, I rely on you immensely. Don't lose interest. I am. Um, So I was able to, um, can you see my screen by chance? Yes, I can. And so I'm on a different computer. So what I can share is a couple of screen prints that I've got. This is uh, a screen print of a plot juggler view. So Jeff wrote a module um, that he provided and um, I, updated that just a little bit to change the, I think my, I had previously told him what I thought my wheelbase was, which was incorrect. And uh, so I corrected that. Henry ran this um, and then captured the data. And then basically, the, this line is, you know, I put that on there just to try to visualize what I thought that number was and sort of, I don't know, interpreted that. Is that what you would call that? Um, that value. So I now know on a flat surface, on concrete, drove my tractor in a tight circle, giving it a command velocity because my low level controller at the moment is programmed to do a hard right with point one being delivered by the joystick. I'm sorry, I said point one, I meant one um, on command velocity. And so when I did that, the results uh, of, I forgot, um, the actual value that's published is what acquired, uh, I forget what you named it. Um, it's like acquired angle or recovered angle, I think is what you called it in this I, program. I think so, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah so at a hard right, my recovered angle value looks to be on average about 0.82. I say hard right, maybe that's a hard left. Um, when it's negative one, uh, the corresponding value was a negative 0.76. So my current code in the low level controller I mean, this is just a screen print of the code. I don't. Um, is if Angular Z is greater than zero, it took Angular Z times um, the result of steer left max minus straight divided by that. So I've got to change this code around in order to effectively, this code was the equivalent of a map function. So I was relying on the fact that Angular Z was between zero and one. So effectively this was acting as a percentage. Um, so it was sort of a cheat, I, I sort of cheated in effect. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it's not a pristine map function like this, you know, and I think you had suggested, hey, just rewrite your map thing. Um, well, I don't have a map. I didn't have a map thing, so I got to re rejigger re this low level code. So that's my next step is to, uh, now that I have these values is to change my uh, low level, uh, low level code. That's where I'm at. And um, 
I've just been doing it on my driveway because I've the size of the circle is about I need about nine feet in order to you know do a hard left and a hard right so I can I can get by with doing that on my on my driveway um, as long as it's not as long as it's not raining oh yeah by the way uh, I fixed my tractor by changing the ignition coil which was uh, a problem from the previous times because I shorted something out and blew out my ignition coil which was a royal pain in the butt so I'm back in testing business and my next step is to update this code with you know a basic map uh, basic map function so on that red plot you just had up there where you were saying you drew the line saying that's approximately what the number is I was, just, I was thinking that um, um, plot juggler may you may be able to click on that plot and say show me the moving average or something on that and I, I don't know if it's got that in I didn't think to go back and try that but there might be just a, a if you click enough buttons in there you might be able to say you know give me an average line and that way it'd be easier to tell where that where that actually is. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think to try that. I know if you if you pull it into Excel and do it there, they they will let you. I think average on a, a line like that, but I I don't know if Plot Juggler will do that or not. It seems to have lots of features, but I never know what they are. <laughs> I have, I just stumble on it and say, oh, that's that's great. I can do this now and and make it work. <clears throat> yeah, that. Um... Do you, I mean, if this is off by a little bit, big problem or not a big problem in your view? If this number is off? Well, I, I think the main thing you want to do is this is just a reference to tell you, you know, what you should be scaling it to. So, you know, just put a number in there and it's, it's, it's going to work one way or the other. It may turn a little too tight or not quite tight enough, but you can go back and then adjust it up or down a little bit then afterwards. And then changing my teleop, um, you know, it, it, to drive the vehicle just to get it to position, you know, I've got a current teleop, uh, what package that is spitting out one and negative one just to drive, you know, um, should I change my teleop package as well? Uh, I would say for the moment, no, just leave it until you get everything running. And then if you want it scaled, so it goes, you know, you push the joystick all the way to the right and it turns it, whatever you consider your max right is. But right, as you can see right now, it's, you're, you're, it's following what your joystick says and you're getting numbers out of it. So I, I probably wouldn't worry about the joystick at the moment, but you are gonna have to rip that scaling out of you would put some extra scaling into that command velocity mux. Just take that scaling out. So you're getting numbers directly from your tab planner and pass those through. Now, if I had this actual code in my low level controller, I'm just talking out loud here for a second. If this map statement received a negative one, would it output? 13,500. On, on the map function, I'm not sure if you put in a number bigger than what you specify, I don't know if it clips it at a certain point or what it what it's doing, I'm not sure. If your, your, your point is, if you just put plus and minus one in there, is it is it, should you expect it to do exactly what it's doing now? Is that your Does, question? Well, the, the map function, is basically saying take anything between zero and minus 0.76 and you know return something between zero and 13500 right yes what if i gave it negative well let me do positives because it's easier to wrap your head around i mean this is saying between zero and 0.82 what if i gave it a 0.84 what would it do? I don't know. 
I, as I say, I don't know what that map function of Eclipse at or what it's doing with it. Yeah. But it may because automatically clip that to 0.82. It might be the biggest number it'll take, or it may go beyond that, and then your your 14,000 would just be a bigger number than that. I, I haven't experimented with that to find out. Yeah, I, I think I'll have to experiment with that because I don't I don't want. I mean, it would be dangerous to get a number bigger than minus 14,000. You should have something down at the, the lowest level in your actual steering controller that says, don't turn any sharper than this. You know, just read your actual numbers coming back from your position sensor. And if it tries to go further than that, don't let it do it at that point. You know, don't, yeah. don't, don't worry about the scaling ahead of time. What is putting out? Just make sure the, 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 the lowest level thing says, do not smash the, do not smash up against the hard stop, whatever, yeah. whatever it takes to do that. I'll have to check that. See if I have and, that safety. At another point, you go back and look at that red red plot you had there, and and what one, one direction it's it's 0 0.82 and the other direction is 0.76. Um, that's probably following because your 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 vehicle is actually turning at a different diameter, going the two different directions. So I I don't know that you want to scale 0.82 and 0.76 directly to whatever those numbers were on your steering. I think you want to say. Uh, you know, basically you have the one number. So if you were to go, something you can try, did, did you make a bag file of this when you ran this exact thing here? Mm -hmm. So I'd say go back and take your GPS and plot it out and, and look at it on the screen and say, are both circles that you drove in the same size? Just looking at it on the GPS. And if they're not, then that means that instead of setting your your left and your right uh, 13, 13, right, five and 14,000. 14, where's that, where's that echo coming from? Not me. Maybe it'll quit. Yeah, there, there just went away. Uh, what was I whining about? Um, oh, the, oh, the, so, so right, right now you have you have numbers one says 13 13,500 one direction and 14,000 other direction and possibly the fact that you've got two different numbers is why it's it's physically driving um, those two different angles coming back out tells me that driving one direction is one diameter circle driving the other direction is a different diameter circle because the whole point of this thing that, that you just ran is showing you what it's actually doing so I think if you go look at your plot your GPS, I think you're going to find that you've got two different size circles coming out of that. So I, I think technically what you probably want uh, both your left and your right steering to be the same number, but I, I, I don't know, since I don't have it in front of me and I can't touch it, I don't know what that's actually doing. Well, I will tell you the turning radius of this lawn tractor is different turning left versus right. I mean, it does make a sharper I mean, it is the physics of the lawn tractor is different. Um, so I, I mean, whether these numbers are perfectly correct or not, I do expect the diameter of the circle to be different, making a hard left versus making a hard right. Well, you, what you want to do is then you want to take whichever one, uh, because the, the numbers coming out of the planner don't know that. It says, I want to turn at, Say, for instance, I want to turn at 0.75 or I want to turn at 0.85, whichever, whichever way it goes. You know, I think you want to use the same number both places because it's saying I want you to turn at this angle. And this this is represent this is telling you what the angle is coming out of the thing. Now, it's, it's, it's not the, the big difference one way or the other, you know, as long as you make sure, number one, make sure you're not going to smash your steering and then put this code in and see what it does. And then you can go back and play with it and decide, you know, do you want both of them scaled exactly the same or do you have to scale the left and the right differently or whatever? Well, uh, let me let me test my understanding with you a second. If um, I think the first time I was turning right, so let's assume this was a, a hard right. And the hard right is a 2.8 uh, diameter circle. And the hard left is 
a slightly tighter circle. So it's 2.5. You know, this is 2.8, this is 2.5. I mean, physically, would you want, would you still set the low level controller to be the same number on this map function? Uh, yes, I would, because that's the actual number you're requesting from the Teb planner. So if your Teb planner puts out a 1.0, then you, you want it to turn it that which at, at this case, you, you don't you don't want a bigger number than either one of these two because that that if you're mapping this to your hard stops, you don't want a bigger one than that. But say if you put in 0. 0.5, well, whether you turn it left or turn it right, if you tell it to turn at an angle of 0. 0.5, then you expect it, when it turns left or turns right, you expect that uh, that angle and that circle to be the same size. Yeah, see, then I don't understand this at all. I mean, this is all just sort of fuzzy stuff to me because I thought this represented, you know, something magic called an angle to the, Teb planer and a 0.82 angle is different than a 0.76 angle. What, what this represents is what your blonde tractor is physically doing. When you drive it, it says this is how fast it is turning, or actually, this is the, I think, the recovered angle out of it. So, th this is the angle that it's driving at. Right. And I, I thought. And, the and, teb planner... and this and the Teb planner are two totally separate different things. The Teb planner says, I want to turn at an angle of 0.5, and it's up to you on your vehicle to make your vehicle turn at an angle of 0.5. And this plot right here is just telling you it, it recovers after it drives. It says, this is the this is what we just saw it doing. So when you say you do the left and the right, hard right and hard left, well, See, the Teb planner doesn't care about hard left and hard right. It says, I want you to turn at an angle of 0.5, and it expects your vehicle to do that. So if you mm -hmm. get the scale correctly, if it says turn at 0.5, and you run this plot, this plot here should show that it says 0.5 by the time you're done. So whether you're turning right or turning left, it should say 0 0.5. It should, this, this plot should follow the, the number that the Teb planner is putting out. But but the whole trick is the, you, the scaling you are going to do with that, that map function you were showing there. So so, okay. so what this is doing, you, you set it to hard right and hard left, and this says this is the angle that it's actually putting out. This is what we think it's doing. So what it's physically capable of doing. That's what it's physically is doing. And I, I'm trying to think. I, I'm I'm thinking just go try it and see what it does. Just make sure make sure it can't smash your hard stop, and then you can try your your map command. You can you can like like you just showed there that those lines you just showed. Yeah, try putting that in and see what that does. So you're scaling left left to one one encoder count and right to the other encoder count, and and see what that does for you. See the whole point is when you're done, you want to be able to say whether you're running the Teb planner or just go to the command line and say, I want you to drive at this forward velocity and this steering angle and put it a 0.5 for the angle. And when you do that, that red plot you have should say 0.5 one way and 0.5 the other way. Okay. And this will forever be called a steering angle. That value is a steering angle. Yes. That's cool. No, oh, hey, Juan. For, uh, sorry for arriving late. That's okay. I was just, um, if you didn't pick up, I don't, I'm, I'm, my was sharing the screen, so I couldn't see when you joined. So uh, my brief status is changed the ignition coil, got the tractor running. Use Jeff's uh, uh, Python code and ran some circles and got a couple of values to load in my low level controller. Uh, so I have what I think is the capability of my tractor's 
uh, extreme left and extreme right steering angle, which is super cool. You're on mute, my man. Sorry. So you get working the command uh, through velocity command uh, Python script? Yes, Python script, yes. I, um, it works like a charm. I mean, it's really simple to run. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So now, uh, yes, it's OK. I, uh, and you get the, the tractor to stop? <laughs> because <laughs> that was one of the problems. I get the, the scripts working, but one day they fail and the, the tractor didn't stop. Um, I, yes, I um, need to call and get a proper, I need to call Cub Get and get a proper uh, wiring diagram and change my uh, E stop. So I have um, two ways. I, I, I took off the radio. I have two ways to stop it, but neither of which are. I, I need to improve that. Um, and so I need to get the, the wiring diagram from Cup Cadet and do a better job of um, it, how I'm. Probably. Which uh, which uh, which diagram do you use? Do you use the one that, uh, that uh, was in the app that Chef shared with you, or you use the one on the PDF that I upload to the Slack? Well, uh, recently I haven't tried to use either one of those to re to change anything permanently. I need to get the one for my particular model from. Cub Cadet, um, because I think I'm at some risk at the moment of doing exactly what I did before, and that is, you know, uh, I'm going to say shorting my ignition coil, um, because as best I can tell, that's what I did. I something got wet and shorted my ignition coil, and um, I don't want to do that again. I. Okay. I I have several comments on that. Num number one, he needs a different wiring diagram than what he has because his lawn tractor is now a the modern fuel injected one and it's totally different than anything else that's out there. So he's got fancy electronics on his engine and he's, his, his uh, spark is actually controlled by a little computer on the engine and his fuel injection is controlled by the computer on the engine. So that's why he needs a specific wiring diagram for what he has. And I, I'm just wondering if they're going to give it to him because as much digging as I did, I don't find anybody saying, oh, by the way, here's the wiring diagram for a Cub Cadet. And it looks like they've, they've taken that out of the operator manual now. So you can't just get an operator manual to find that out. You probably either have to get a service manual or it could be if you beg hard enough, they will just send you a PDF file of the wiring diagram. But, you know, eventually you're going to have to have that to, uh, to, to actually know what's going on here. So another, another thing you could do is uh, you could just kill, let's see, is that going to work? You, you might be able to just kill the, uh, the power from the battery to the ignition switch. So put a relay in between there. So if you turn the relay on, that opens up and just you, you lose your 12 volts going to your ignition system. Now, that may or may not work because uh, actually, if somewhere says there's a fuse in line with your... Uh, wiring that's underneath it originally was underneath your seat somewhere they said there's a 20 amp fuse what you could try is you could try pulling that fuse out with it running and see if the engine dies and if it does then if you just put a relay in series with that if you open up that relay it basically kills the 12 volts and you're not shorting anything out you're just simply you know pulling the pulling Bring the power the that's going to it and that may or may, or may not make it stop i don't know you could try that without the, without knowing anything about the good. wiring diagram that might work yeah, that's a good idea. That's the way yeah. that I have it. The way yeah. that Jeff say, because my security system is about that. 
So another another point. Um, I, I when when Juan first asked, did you get it to stop? Were you asking, do you, do you can you make the could you get the kill switch to work? Or are you asking if you stop sending a command velocity, does it stop? The, the two things, because uh, the, the first time that I use the command velocity as uh, uh, as I'll use it, I get it working the right way. So I go forward and as the command velocity ends uh, in his way, uh, the um, actuators uh, go back to neutral and the tractor will stop. But the problem that I had that with the, my my tractor was that one day that didn't happen, and the tractor I don't know why, uh, what, uh, which was the problem. But the tractor didn't stop, and I crashed the tree, and I began having the problems. That was the first time that I lose the connection of the GPS, that the the GPS uh, lose the the cable gap to the antenna. So uh, I, I wasn't getting GPS for achieving the heading and the position. So um, that was uh, why I was asking him. Uh, now, my command velocity commands, I mean, they work fine. I mean, I'm able to go you know, forward, reverse, turn left, left, turn right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But the question is, does it stop? If you set, stop sending the command velocity, does it stop? I, yes. I think was the original question. Yes, yeah. it stops. It goes yeah. into the new. It, it interprets no command velocity as, you know, please set the transmission to neutral and it does and it, it stops. Um, it, but just a little bit more on the engine itself. It is this, uh, it is a, a 547 CC overhead valve engine. It's made by a company called MTD. Uh, and marketed with a couple of different names. Powermore is one of them. Cub Cadet is another. The electronic fuel injection system is made by a company called Wall Bro, and they sell, you know, five components that they've integrated, which includes. The fuel pump, as Jeff said, the throttle, which has a computer connected to it, the exhaust oxygen sensor, the ignition coil, and an engine temperature sensor all working together. And I'm lucky I didn't blow out that computer and I just blew out this ignition coil, which is what I replaced. And uh, there is also a key system that's plugged into all of that because um, the key goes into this um, power power system. But I didn't see a fuse anywhere in this uh, whole, whole they, uh They claimed that the fuse would be like right close to your battery and they said it's in the wiring harness under your seat. So since you took your seat off, it's not gonna be under your seat anymore. But I think it's gonna be, between the battery and everything else, you're, you're going to have the main wire going to your starter solenoid that will not be fused, but then it's got a smaller wire coming off your battery that probably has a fuse before it goes into everything else. So that, that's what I was talking about, where the fuse might be. Yeah, I mean, I love the technology. It's just really sophisticated, and you don't want to break it. <laughs> and I'm Do also... I'm also very surprised you didn't blow out everything when this happened. So you're, you're, yeah, you are lucky that it just took out the ignition coil because I'm sure that's much cheaper than. And if you look, there's a big, big block on the side of your engine with a heat sink on top of it. That's your computer that's that's doing all this stuff. And I know that because looking at all the various diagrams of digging, they they show just kind of a crude picture, and you can see on the side of the side of the lawnmower what looks like a big big aluminum block that's got a heat heat sink on it. So that that's your actual computer, and then all those other little modules you're just showing plug into that somehow. I believe. This reminds me, I need to call Cub get that and get the actual wiring diagram for my uh, my. Uh my model anyway Juan and not me blathering on what's going on in your world well I have I have a hard stop in the 
12. Uh, let me share. Well, last week uh, I got a time to share with the the electronic engineer that builds the other project, and I was work I and I work it uh, the whole uh, Friday in trying to port the project from the discovery board to the EST M32F4B uh, board. Uh, as I understand, the only way is that to catch the code from the, from the repository, and then you open the firmware IOC uh, file, and you have to go through all the pins in the chip <laughs> and, and replicate the same configuration of the other chip in this chip. I, I asked uh, some guys if there was another way to do this because I found it very annoying to use a word but uh, I could not find somebody who, who, who explained me to do it in another way. So I went to the whole chip, uh, turning off and on, uh, um, uh, putting the GPOs like this. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm doing uh, something valuable uh, and how this will end. I'm I'm getting the sense that I'm in a in a loophole. Uh, I don't know how to show it, uh, but uh, as I'm working in this project, I got to do this. Um, but I didn't. I wasn't able uh, to test it. I think that uh, I'm, I'm missing some kind uh, some instructions here. Uh, but I will know it when I flash the board. I have to go through the 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 bug the debug firmware tool and try to find the errors that I have. Uh, this is an important task, is because one of the main problems that we are using uh, this uh, board is that uh, we get the. Um, I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, we get the sensor from the motors, how the, the, the wheels move, and we don't find that another way to get the information from the odometry from the wheels. Uh, I don't know how... Uh, Encoder. What? Encoder or odometer? Yes, 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 yes. The motors uh, have a building encoder, uh, and working with the es 32 uh, give us the opportunity to, to get the information from their colors. So as I cannot find in Argentina the discovery board, and I think that it's not easy to find it uh, anywhere in the world, we are using another board that is very similar, but we have to migrate the code to that board. And I mean, the, the, the sum of this is that I'm migrating the code in the es 32 IDE to that board. I was working with that. I think that I'm near to finish the work, but I'm not sure. What's the encoder that you're trying to get to work? Uh, I don't know if I have any kind of photo, but it's in the motor. The, 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 the encoder is built in, in the electric motor of the wheels of the robot. Uh, I, I can... Mm -hmm. Do you have a name of the motor? Mm. Let me. Mm. I mean, I hate to see somebody struggling with the daggone chip and the <laughs> IDE like you are, because the IDE is supposed to make you more productive, not less productive. Yes, but as I was explaining a uh, chef the other day, let me, I'm trying to find the, the boards. 
A picture of the robot to, sh uh, to show you the encoders. No. That's okay. While, while you're looking for that, Al, can you post a link to that thing you showed that was the uh, pictures from your Cub Cadet fuel injection thing? I'd never seen that stuff before. I did a lot of digging and I didn't see that one thing that you had there. So if you can post that to the chat, that would be that would be handy. Okay. Okay, well, I, I cannot find it. Uh, so my work has been this uh, for the last uh, week. The, and I, I was working in the simulator of this robot, and, and I caught some. Uh, I, 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 have, I, I've been having problems with the robots when when I launch, um, uh, because the robot when I launch the simulator, the robot uh, it's like it, it's shut down, uh, it's forward to the space. Uh, and this is something because when they put the robot a little under the, the level of the, the ground, it, it's, I don't know, but it's rocketed up to the space. So you have to put it, if you remember sometimes when you run the simulator, you see the tractor, it's like they leave the tractor and the, leg, and the, and the tractor falls a little. That's a trick that you do with the simulator. And one of the things that I, uh, I have to do to the taxi to modify the simulator to get that uh, to that uh, to get that um, uh, working. So, um, if, if we come to a break here, I want to go all the way back to the point where you said you're trying to go into the IoT and remap all of your pins. As I've said multiple times, I don't think you have to remap anything. There's absolutely no reason to do that. As long as the basic chip is the same chip, there's no reason to move any pins around. So no, just... it's, it's, it's not the same chip because the, 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 we couldn't find a, a, a board that had the same chip of the ESTM uh, discovery. Uh, the ESTM32 F4 discovery. We were able to find out in Argentina a, a chip that is the F407 BGT. That's the most common chip that we can find here. So I have to remap the pins in the project because we didn't get the same chip. Well, my thought is if you go look at both chips side by side, the pins are going to be in the same spot. Now, I, I might be wrong on that, but that to me, it seems like you know, if it's a, if it's a 32F407, which I think is what both boards use, some variation of that, the, the pin should be in the same spot. So I think you're, I think you're going way, way out of your way here to, to change something that's not a problem. No, no, no. Uh, I understand what you're saying. And if you, uh, I can show you a video of how I do the work. And I start with the different chip. It's not the same chip. Because I do this work like this. I put the <laughs> in one window. I, you are seeing my computer? Yes. Yes. I work with one window like this, and the other window, if, uh, wait me a second. I will try to do it. Uh, uh, hmm. Do you, do you know what the part number of the two chips are? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I cannot say it now. I have to, to well, look you, for it. You, you can post it later on the on the Slack group. But but, but my thought is, I, I, I just want to know, are they radically different chips or is it just the same chip with a slightly different... Um, at one point you said it didn't have as much memory or something. Yes. But, 
they are the same chip, but they are the, they got the slightly difference in the chip, so you have to remap it. It's not something that is totally different. It's a slight different, but you have to remap it. As I understand, maybe I'm wrong what I'm uh, what I'm saying, but I I couldn't find a. a I'm trying to find the. Well, at this point, let's just leave it at the point that if, if you find the two chip numbers, just post them to Slack so I can go look at them and then I'll. Okay. Maybe I'm telling you to do the wrong thing, but I, I, I just want to see what you have. So, because it doesn't seem to me like, unless there are major differences, I don't think you should be having to remap pins. And the reason I say that is because you've got a chip on your discovery board, you got a chip on the other board. If the, the, the two chips have the same pins, it's really just a matter of where you hook up a wire on your new board. On the discovery board, it might go to say to pin three, but on your new board, that same IO, that same processor pin may go out to say pin five on your board. So you just have to plug the wire into the right spot on the board. The, the, the pins, the pins in the processor, if 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 they if they are similar enough, you don't have to remap any of the pins. But as yes. I say, as I say, po yes. post post the part numbers and I'll go look at it later and, and tell you if if I what tell you which way I think you should go on that. Okay, okay, okay. But the, the but the problem is that when you try to flash the the firmware to the chip uh, to the other board, the IDE doesn't let you do that because it recognizes it as another uh, uh, board. Okay. And, and again, if I if I knew what what the chips were, I might have some more comments on that. Okay. I, I think one, one issue is that if when they created the project, they said, go to that uh, tool and says, pick a board from uh, ST Micro. And one of the boards was called um, Discovery F4, or whatever that was called. So they actually went through and defined the board at that point. But you you can just say define the processor, and I don't know if you you know after the fact if you can just go change the processor name, the processor number, and that will fix all the problems. So that that might be the other the other issue at that point. Yes, I understand the same thing that you are saying. Uh, the 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 projects in the EST32 are defined by boards, nor not by chips. You, you could do it either way with that. You, you can say, uh, go through all the boards and pick the board that they specify. And what that really does is just, it's just going to show you on the, it, what it really does is create something that you don't want. It's going to say, oh, pin three is, is the LED on the discovery board. And you don't care about that. You know, once, once somebody went through that mapping process and said, make pin three is going to go to these, the motor encoder, then that's, that's all you care about. Because so you're basically just saying the pin on the processor to the pin on the board. That's physically when they laid out the board. That's going to be a mapping that they did, and it, that's going to be different on your board. But but when you start up that, uh, if you start a new project, you can say, do you want to pick a board from ST Micro? And you say, no, I just want to, um, I just want to pick the processor chip itself. And you go on the, the list of processors and you pick the one that you want. And then everybody's happy at that point. So somewhere buried in there, it does. It is going to say this is the processor chip that I'm using, and it's going to have a different part number than what you're using. So that's what it's complaining about right now. It doesn't actually care about the fact that you've got an F4 discovery board. It just knows that processor on that board was STM32 F4 407 something, and then yours is going to be like a maybe a 405 instead of a 407 or whatever or 453, whatever that number is, somewhere in the code, you have to tell it that's the processor that you're using. And then that may or may not screw up your pin mapping. But again, if I if I knew what your two chips were, I might have some more comments on that. I would try to come out with the with that, with that info because uh, in, in some way, it will guarantee some kind of quality doing. I'm simply pushing the issue. So I thank you for that. Okay. 
Ed, your, your the question was something about the encoders on the motor. I, I wasn't quite sure. You, you just can't no, get that no, to work? No, no, no. no, no. I don't have any question about that because I wasn't able to get to that point to share the the to share the that that instance. Uh, when I come out with that a problem, I will be able to, to to test it. But now I'm stuck with this with the migrating to to the board that I have. Because on I, I am using quadrature encoders, which is probably what's built into that motor that you have, and I've I've made that work, so I know I know how to make it work with the ST micro chips. So when you get that far, we we can we can go down that path. I hope. <laughs> And I pray to, to that moment. <laughs> I'm seeing it uh, very far forward. Uh, I'm uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I have entered a, a, a rabbit hole here. Um, and maybe I'm not in the mood now, but I will try to, because I'm not getting good feedback of the guy of the project. Uh, mainly because I'm not at the same level, uh, because he's an electric engineer and, and, and I'm not. And and I get I, I it's not very common to find people that use the the EST in 32 either. Uh, I, I I only know you, the guy in the project that is working, and another guy, and that's that's the end. The other guys, they all use the Arduino uh, either, and it's much, much, much easier. It's okay. something to take in account uh, the next time that I'm entering in a project, not to go to that path because it's not easy to get feedback uh, of some tool that there are so, uh, so little people that use it. A lesson. Yeah. And, and for your immediate problem, I think it's just a fundamental thing of deciding is this going to work and it, is it just changing a couple of numbers to make it work or is it going to be more than that? So I, I think that would be the first thing to figure out because it, 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 it may be fairly easy to just switch it across. And I, I, I think you're just making it too hard, but I, I'll, I'll make that decision after I, after I figure out what the two chips are. I'll, I'll have some more comments on that. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. So what, once you have that that board, uh, how are you going to wire that up to things? You're just going to put it on a like put it on a perf board and then run wires from there to connectors. Is that how you plan yes. to use that? Or? Yes, for the uh, because I assign uh, assign a thing in the process. Uh, well, one of the goals was that I couldn't flash the, the firmware to the board. Now that I have flashed the film to the board, uh, the next uh, thing was to try to get information from the board and uh, to put in up the different uh, pins of the chip. Uh, now that I get that, when I get this working, I, uh, the first thing that I will try to do is through a protocol, link it to the Raspberry Pi and begin getting the different topics and know if the system would rose, uh, rise up uh, to use a word. Uh, if I get that, uh, I think that I will be in the right path and only will be something uh, of configuration or setup in the robot because I can miss the pins, that kind of things. But I, now I feel far from that point. But uh, as I understand it, there is an. Uh, I talk with the engineers, and they say, and the the, the, the guy say me that the, the the way to do this was the way that I'm doing it uh, uh, to go through the the conversion. Uh, it's not. Uh, the, the main problem is that that I don't get the feedback. Uh, uh, from someone that said me that I'm doing the right the work. That's the main problem, uh, not to do the work. The, uh, because I'm feeling that I'm not, uh, I'm working, I'm walking in moody, moody terrain 
and I'm not sure if I'm advanced, uh, going forward or backwards uh, with the work. But the, the, the good thing was that I worked with the, with the guys last Friday. Uh, I wasn't able to work with them uh, for, for the last three months. So I'm better uh, now than, than, than I was last week. At least I got someone uh, to work with and get some feedback. Uh, and well, I will try to go on with this and see what can uh, what can I achieve. You have the, the name of that board handy? Uh, yes. The, the new board? Uh, it's E and Sorry, uh, I will try to, uh, to. Is it on Slack somewhere? If I'd search you there, is it, am I going to find it there? No, 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 no. no. Uh, well, I thought at one point you said I bought this new board. I thought you posted something on Slack about that. So, yes, but uh, that's one. And I will show you a photo uh, because I didn't get much information about it. Than a radar gun. That's that's the the name of the board, or that's the name of the chip. That's the name of the board. But I will okay. wait a second that I will come out with the the confirmation. About okay. You see here, EST32F4XX. And uh, can, can you either post that name in the chat or, or share your screen so I can see what you're looking at? Yes, I, I put it in the chat, the name. In the you just, you, you just said something else, so I didn't know what that was. Uh, yes, I'm trying to find out uh, if I can get more information from the uh, wait a second uh, from the um, the place that I bought the board. Yes. I had found that at one time. I it was either on Amazon or eBay. I found that board. I just here. it's this one. Wait. Is it is it this board here? Yes. Okay, so I can I can dig through that. It, it looks like it's saying that it's a STM thirty two F four oh seven, and I think that's that's the base number. What's on my discovery board, which I don't have one handy here. So yes. It, anyway, anyway, I, I can look at that and see. Yes, there is a difference between what is here and what I get in my in in the um, in the, the uh, I posted the links there in the because if you go to the ide you won't find this board. You have to find a similar board to this one. Okay. So I went through the. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so that, that gives me something to look at. I'll, I'll take a look at it and see if, if I can make any sense of this. Well, I thank you for your time. How do I? Is there something that I can help you? I, I just want to look at it and see what to see, see what the see what the differences are, and then I can I can make a decision on how how I think you should pre, uh, proceed on that. Yes, I I will. Uh, one of the thing, the the thing was that uh, I didn't go much inside the, the this issue because as I get with the, the engineers, the engineer says that um, I've been working because if I can. If I discuss all things, I won't go forward. So I begin working. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe it needs some kind of revision uh, about it. Uh, it uh, it's, it's not easy for me to understand that it's so difficult to do this. Uh, but as there are a lot of clone boards, maybe that's the, the issue. So, uh, well, I will have to leave. Thank you. Okay, let me let me see if I have to do anything here. Uh, save chat. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop the recording, and you can leave. Well, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.